are we starting with here? Why don't you start with the Jumai? Again, we're talking we're categories. Here? No, that's oh, the diagram. Okay, so we'll go right there. Yep. Jumai, I'm going to give you some words. You have to teach me how to say Gervester, Vester, Vayner, Viner. Right. And I'll teach Vayner you how to say Vayner, Chuck. No, 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 I'm not that one. <laughs> Gervester, Viner. How do you say Gervester, Viner? Gewürztraminer. Say it again. Gewürztraminer. Watch your mouth. <laughs> um, all right, so there's Jumai. Yep. There's Jumai Ginjo, mm -hmm. Jumai Dai Ginjo sitting and that's, in front of And you. that's what we're going. And we're, so we're starting here. And we're starting Jumai. with the dryer, the Jumai, right. okay. the Chikudin. Which is the driest um, of the bunch. Yeah, and it's not super dry. I could have, you know, typically I could have brought a very dry, Chikurin. dry bone. Chikurin? Chikurin. Chikurin. Hi, Fukumari, which is kind of depth, the translation. Jumai. All right. Yeah. And that's the other problem with sake. And this is a 60 percenter? This is a 60%, it's, it's should be 70% because it's Jumai, mm -hmm. but they're all trying to get so premium that they're kind of bumping their own envelope. Mm -hmm. So the category Jumai is And talk 70. about the percentages, so. When you mill rice, when you polish away, yeah, each grain of rice, sake brewing rice is, is twice as starchy as regular consumption rice. And what you want to do is you want to mill it. You want to grind away the outsides, the bad stuff, the impurities, fats, minerals, proteins, vitamins. Everything's it's like good cleansing. For you. It is. It's like a lemonade Everything's cleanse. Everything's good for you, but bad for sake. All you want is starch. You want to break that starch into a glucose and then to alcohol. So for the minimum category called Jumai, up until about three years ago, it had to be 70% And they remaining. that by hand, right? They have three little people <laughs> that they make a circle right. around each grain and they keep right. going around it. They're little people. How, how, do, um, how, how does the process go for people that don't know that? Milling machine. They use yeah. these big milling towers. They used to use water wheel mills, truthfully. Do and, you think uh, some people will go back to the old school water mill and... It's funny. And everything else I, is trying to go back to old school. But there is a guy. I have a guy who... Yeah? Yeah. Has, he, he does it. And it takes a long time. It's and arduous expensive. and it's expensive. Mm -hmm. The other thing, rice. Sake brewing rice, good rice, is really hard on the outside and soft, absorb it in the inside. Why? It's got to stand up to friction. Sometimes these guys are on mills yeah. for like, for literally 48 hours, getting beat up and you don't want to crack it. And then when you're done with it, you want to absorb some water so it kind of ferments much and better. If it, so. And if it cracks, it's out? Or no, you know, but you still want to crack it. They, so it's kind of yeah. like the skins and wine kind of play there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But it makes a better brew if it doesn't Absolutely crack. Absolutely understand. Because so, there's more even fermentation. You don't get up, up and down. So. Okay. What are we going to um, drink this out of? You're going to drink out of a white wine glass. Perfect. Please. And what I'll show you is, uh, you know, again. And you're going to drink it out of? I don't drink this stuff. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I want you to do it because I want you okay. to taste well, how. Gonna, uh, I will. I will. Okay. What are we tasting it out of? How many? You want me to taste it out of all these different things? When I taste it, when you do a wine review, yes. what glass do you use? I'm a very interesting character on this. Not more than me. Um, fair. Um, but yes. Um, I, I taste out of a lot of generic glasses. I, I've done a show where I've proved that the glass has an impact, but I believe the global aspect of it is it gets into subtleties and nerdism, which is great, and I definitely think you can experience a wine within its burgundy glass or Bordeaux glass in a different manner. And Definitely taste the different subtleties, especially on the nose. Um, but I go pretty standard, even at home. I'm a pretty loosey goosey character. You know, F students. We don't we don't draw F within the lines. Loosey goosey. Okay. You know, we don't draw within the lines. But you get. But you said it. You touched mine. There is a little bit. There of is play. a factor. Okay. There's absolutely a factor. What if you had all your? Are you an A drinking? student? Tell the truth right now. Christ, don't lie. No, absolutely Tell the truth. not. I was horrible education. The only thing I've ever been. I hated education. Let me rephrase that. I didn't understand education because I was never passionate about something enough to really understand sure. and educate something. I was a horrible student. I was very into gym class though. Good for you. Thank you. Tumbling, I bet. I was uh, so into tumbling and jump rope. <laughs> Square uh, dancing. Keep me focused. Dough. Keep me focused. Please. Would you do your tastings like a white wine out of that? Would you yes. do red wines out yes. of something that small? Yes, you would I would. just do that? I, w I w You're asking just a question. Just to get it, yeah? I would. But okay. nobody else would. Right. Okay. Okay, why? Because it would constrict the flavor, put all the no, sweetness. No, at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're now just having fun with each other. Or at least I'm, I'm really enjoying this. No, I would not. I would not have red wine out of that. Okay. So my point is a lot of people will drink sake out of little ochoco like this. This guy had a reason. It had, it had a purpose. It was supposed to go with hot sake. <laughs> You keep it hot. A little smaller vessel keeps it hotter longer. And you could sell them in the, so, in the, in the stores. Absolutely. Okay. But if you're drinking premium sakes out of little cups like that, it just doesn't do justice to the what the beautiful. So what do you drink sake out of? When I do my reviews, since White people wine ask glass? me, absolutely. No, what I'll do I is, love it. I will do three. I will do three glasses, and usually, let me show you guys this. So it'll be an old choco. It'll be glass like this or like this, and then the white wine glass. And what I do is. I will use my nose and I'll taste out of all three of those and I'll compile those notes together to make that one note under the assumption that not everybody drinks out of one same glass. And what happens when you're out and about? I'll always go wine glass. If you're in a restaurant, anybody, if people bring this to you like that, say, no, please, can I have a white wine glass? And if they bring you a carafe and they bring you something like a shot glass, don't. Sake is a sipping drink. It's, a, it's not a shooting drink. 
Don't don't shoot soccer. So you're talking Sit about it. something that I'm getting excited about. I mean, you're talking about here we are in this platform. We've got some ears, a lot of influencers. You're saying let's make the movement for sake into white wine glasses. Oh, it's already done. It's a done deal. Done deal. That's what you sell in the store. If we walk I, in the store right now, yeah, I sell you. I, I sell the uh, little Viognier Chardonnay uh -huh. uh, O series. Right. With yeah. no no stem. Yeah. Th is, that like your tra is that your transition play? Because <laughs> no, that's funny. You say that. Transition. I never thought it. You transitioning. I caught Thank it. You. I understand that. that. I understand Thank that. Thank you. Uh, transition. Uh, <laughs> a transition play because people will kind of make that association. Yeah. And because I think if they saw this, out. you probably don't want people debating that with you all day. Like, fun really? Fa fun fact number seven. Perfect. Do you know why they didn't have stemware in Japan for years and years and years? St What's that? I was thinking the same thing, actually. Good call. That's exactly what I was thinking. Good Is that true? Call. No. Well, all the glasses actually have cement base for that reason. I'm joking on that one. Kimonos. Long sleeves. Dunk. Absolutely. Makes so much sense. Absolutely. I like that. That is an awesome fun fact. There you go. All right. So let's taste this. You're tasting two. I'm tasting two. I got the guy in mind. Now, what's the suggested retail price of this? Uh, this guy would be, I would, I would say, uh, 28 28 Okay, let's give it a whirl. I think yours is cheaper. Well done, my friend. We're we're a discount player. Nice. All right, sniffy sniffing. Absolutely, I love the sniffy sniffing. And you know, I'll be honest. I, I'm a dork, uh, but I have to communicate things to people. So people are like, "What does it smell like?" And I'm like, "Okay." So then I learn like, "How do you smell?" Okay. So do you do one nostril. You try to do the other nostril. It helps you kind of focus. And so I, over the years, I've trained myself to actually have a pretty good nose. Yeah, I used to do like but the I, not. Do you remember this move? Like everybody was yeah. making fun of me of. That's like no, I but did that the one, and then you try to concentrate yeah. and put them together. Absolutely. Again, when you're put in a position where you have to communicate stuff to people, I don't like to screw around. I like to be as accurate sort of as I possibly can. Sure. But in Japan, there's a huge philosophy. It's like, oh, the sake must smell like it tastes. There's got to be this big union. And I've training, you know, like my the different Soviet so Union? So yeah, the, so the Soviet Union. My sommelier licenses of dictate that I've got to really capture essences. There's Talk primary about your sommelier license. What's that, what's that all that? Let's get to that in half a second because I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. When, when you can I do it? When you uh, I'm very good to my guests. So yes. When, when you uh, have a bottle of sake, it has not usually been uh, the date of a bottle of sake will be on it. That's sort of a release date, and you should consume sake since it is pasteurized between about 15 and 18 months after release date. So you're saying about a year so, and a half after the date you see on the bottle is really as far as you want to push that's it. That's when that brew, at that point, will taste like the brewer wants you to taste it. After so you're that, saying, you walk into the store, a lot of people are starting to shop sake, yeah. you find the date, like yeah. this one, which is... Right there. Right there? 21-2. 21-2. Nice. What's that, February 21st? Nice. This is the emperor's calendar. Uh -huh. so this is the imperial calendar. Not all bottles have that. So the, the newest emperor in Japan was 21 years ago. Okay. So this would be this year. Got so it. Tw this is the 21. So this would be January, February of this year. Got it. Right. So now I have to drink this next year sometime in like August. To capture the essence of what that brewer is trying to make. Absolutely. That's After it. That, it's it a rule. Kind of, you know, it's that's it. That's it. I mean, that's oh. it. Okay, Line but, in the sand. All right. So then what do you do when it comes past that time? Excuse me. You just spit on it. Mock, can you zoom Why'd you wipe it? I'm going to Where's my water bottle? Bottom. So what you do, the great thing about sake is if it's a little bit older past its prime, heat it. Warm it up. Is that the play? Hello. Absolutely. That's the play? It'll give you longevity of your booze. No so question. So if it goes, so here's, you, you let it go past its prime, you heat it up. Just like peeps, you move to Florida. You can, you heat I mean, it up. This is just people. like human beings. You want to go down to the warmer climates and to get that good feeling. Grandma warm, went past you and sent it to Florida. <laughs> People also ask, like, I love how long can that bottle last, last. once you open it? And you, you open it. There's no cork in in, in sake. Nope. They're like one percent of yep. at the most will use cork as a fancy kind of thing. Right. It's a marketing it's all, play. It's all twist off. It's all caps. Right. And okay. that's why you can take it to a restaurant. They would charge you corkage because there's no cork. Nice. You like it? It's so, Is it's that horrible. your move? Hello. When no. you like when you zing. It's the first time you're like, hello. It. Cut. It's a Don't first. You, <laughs> you suck. You did it four times already. Right? I have not done hello. You're like Fonzie with an H. Nice. All right. You're O for I'm Fonzie. <laughs> this is Let's tremendous. Go. Let's go. Um, well, this is, and, honestly, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm really enjoying this. I mean, I'm learning quite a bit, which is fun for me in beverages in general because there are a couple that I really want to know more about. So I really appreciate it. I know they are as well. Um, you just helped me segue. See? Aroma. So what happens is this guy has not touched air for about maybe up to six, 12 months. When you open it, sometimes you get a primary aroma mm -hmm. that you never capture in the glass. That's what I'm saying, I'm kind of like pedantic, yeah. crazy like that. So then you go to the first first aroma. There's actually, there's poor aroma, primary aroma, one nostril, two nostril, both together, and then you go. So that's, that's how you aroma. like to do it. 
that's how I do it. That's not how I'd like to do it, but that's how I do it. And, it, and do you want to impose that will on the world? Yes. Okay, no. I saw it in You know what? That's the great thing about it. everybody's a champion on their own palate. Mm -hmm. Booze is a luxury. Do with it what you want. Mm -hmm. Drink out of but you cup do, But hands. you want them to open their mind to it. How they execute within the field Absolutely. is up especially to them. Especially kind of. wine people. If you guys, if you translate, I mean, use all your vernacular. Oh my God. Let's do the nose. You start. Go. Okay. You say one, then I'll say one. Okay. What I'm really picking on here is a little bit of like a sugar cane play. Good. I, get, car I get caramel. I get a little bit of like a, uh, God, the sugar cane is really ripe for me. Star fruit. A little hint of star fruit on the back end of the nose. Star fruit. Those are those little weird things at the seeds in the middle of it? Yes. When was the last time you smelled a star fruit? Probably about 60 days ago. I'm going to buy one tonight. You should. Um, I'm going to cover my whole body. Rice. <laughs> Steamed. So... Do you get rice? Do you need any rice? Because I get steamed rice, not cooked rice, sort of steamed rice. I do, and almost like almost like a rice dessert play because there's okay. a little more of that sugar play with the star fruit. You know what I mean? It's a little bit of that with the caramel. You know, it smells like a rice pudding dessert kind of in a way. No question. The cobo that they I'll use. I'll tell you right now, the sugar cane part, like I really get. You. How about you? I get it. It's like yeah. that. It's a powdered sugar. Well, yeah, kind of like a manufactured sugar spell, as opposed to more like the cane, like what you use in mang. Like you know what? Like a, like a, in um. What, mojito, you know, a lot of people are using the sugar cane, so I've become really sensitive to sugar cane. I like, I like gnaw on it quite a bit. Have you ever gnawed on a sugar cane? I have. It's fun and uh, delicious. It is delicious. And it's got a great scent, and I pick it up in here. What else do you gnaw on? Many things. Bark. Bark. Bark, yes, I'm really that's right. into You are the gnaw. You know, so eat dirt on you're, TV, you know, whatever it takes. No, All right, let's you're give a it a gnawing dude. Let's do it. Dozo. Hello. Dozo. There you go. Holy God! I left. <laughs> I left my pot roast. That was the greatest moment in wine library TV history. This is absolutely shaping up to be the best episode. Ma, that was caught, right? They definitely heard that. All right, I, I left focus. my pot roast in there, dude. I have six minutes. We gotta hurry, please. Let's go. Let's people. wrap this thing up. Um. Now, by the way, can I say one thing? Yes. Um, two. Two things. He tastes room temperature for everything. I, I quite, not, I mean, yes. All right, I was led to believe that you do. I really do. Okay. Maybe champagne, I'm a little no, bit. No, I heard you do champagne. I do, I do. But okay. I, listen, I'm a very transparent dude. Maybe 50% of the time with champagne, but white wine, like 95. 95. And red wine, all. Because all three of these guys can do well chilled. I, I'm, I'm sure. You probably have a temperature range. But this range. guy, absolutely. You sake. probably have a temperature range you like them to be in. Absolutely. Which is? Uh, different for every one of them. Okay. Sake by far is the greatest temperature range of all boozes out there. From freezing, like sake slushes, to a piping hot hot scon sake. There's a ton of different temperature points. And brewers sometimes on the label will put a little crutch for you. They'll say, oh, it's good at right out of the refrigerator. Oh, it's good room temperature. Oh, it's good lightly warmed, nudukan. Uh, or it's really good atzcon. This guy, I think, does very well. Uh, room temperature does well with the light chill to it as well. But if you warm that guy, it's it's beautiful. So now, but the other guy, three times I said that this guy does far better chilled. I really like sake, He's... like like a lot, mm. like a lot, a lot. It's shocking how how little I know about it in the scheme of things compared to how much I like it, being what I do for a living. I, it's something I'm. You're gonna have to come back every week, but you hear me talk. I do. It's passion. And so one of the great, and your passion too, you have a great vehicle here. My vehicle has been pretty limited with my store, my customer base. Mm -hmm. I read a newsletter through mm -hmm. True Sake that goes out to about 15,000 people mm -hmm. once a month. But with SakeSocial.com right now, I'm do, starting to do a forum. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting to do blogging a little bit better. And, and We're going to talk after this. We're going to talk, people. We're going to talk. Okay. Um, I like this quite a bit. Okay. I think it's got really nice, solid complexity. I don't think it's making me think as much as, you know, uh, I, I definitely feel like I definitely had sake in the, in the past and it definitely can feel the intuition that there's so many more sakes out there that bring more complexity aspects than this wine does. See, I call it a wine. Um, brew that does, hello. Um, but I definitely feel that uh, it, it's a solid play. I'm enjoying it. Uh, I, I like the soft acidity on the back end. Still structured with a good amount of fruit. I almost get a more of a citrus play on the back end of my palate. Like almost like a- God, you are good. 
No, you're good. Man. Thank you, man. That's good. You know, palates are palates, kind of. You know, like a little, like almost like a like a lemon, dro like a lime drop. Like a, I would take lime juice and do like a little thimble in the back here, but it's nice. You, know, you said it presents itself back here. Absolutely. And you'll notice that with the when room temperature, a little bit of acidity of sake comes sure. out a little bit more. Which I? is probably what you know, because I'm so addicted to acid. That I think that probably has a big factor to the way I like. Ooh, it. so when I said sake has one third the acidity, that kind of that yeah. was a downer for me. Yeah, for me it was a little bit. We, but, I'm sure you could take acid gum or something. Pre, that's a very good pre idea. Pre-chew. What do you think about this? Dress. I love it a lot, and again, I love the story. I give this and an I think A minus. This is a food pair an A minus. You are you're awful. <laughs> I like you. Um, good food pairing brew. So a lot of times people think, oh, sake's got to be a sushi, but hell, this is a center of the plate. This is a, a beef game. This is a chicken fowl. This is a grill, anything grilled brew. That is something I definitely you know, know coming in. I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, shellfish Beautiful. is something that I've been really pairing it with, you know, kind of from the hip. Uh, lots of oysters. Uh, Nothing with, better. All honest, a juice can't hit that sweet spot like a starch can. Yeah. I'm not joking. No, I, I understand. Uh, it pulls that natural sweetness it's out, like, especially shellfish. We should make t-shirts like rice versus grape. Well, I do a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. I go and do a lot of heads to heads where I'll mm -hmm. do wine, mm -hmm. be beer too. Mm -hmm. We just we're in such a great age in life. I right agree. Now, where I agree. We can play when there's no rights and wrongs, and everybody's the champion. Pe and there's no people are blown away by my my interest in high quality beer. They're like, oh, sorry, beer. I'm like, what are you talking? Oh, about? No way. I mean, like, how about soda? Like root beer. Dude, I love it. Seriously, like real root beer. I, I love it. I'm insane about it. I used to smoke cigars. I don't do it anymore. But I used to, my favorite was root. Why do you stop, thick, kids? Uh, I run a lot. I'm a big runner, right. and I just would feel it here. What are you running time. from? I'm running from you <laughs> after this episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. All right, so let's grab rinse. the second one. Now, this guy... We're going to rinse hard. Oh, thank you. This guy is from Kyoto Prefecture, and this brewery what is, is about that? 300 what years that old. That's the brewery? Well, it's like a state. Uh, okay. It's Kyoto. It. Kyoto? Um, and okay. these guys, Kyoto? thank you for pouring. I should be pouring for you. That's all right. I should be pouring for um, my guest. And a really kind of cool brewery. This guy showed me. He, he 300 year old brewery. And uh, he said, well, we use satellite technology in our brewery. And I was like, you're joking, because he had all this archaic equipment, really old stuff. And he said, no, we use satellite imaging to lay down our grass field, or our grass, our and, rice fields. And it's a Jumai so Jinjo, cool. right? Jinjo. And, uh, uh, and what's the suggestion re retail this? This guy is 38 bucks. And what's the uh, Japan Prestige Sake Association? They're the importers. Okay. Now, again, we import a lot of sake in this country. They're the number one importers. So the Japan Prestige Sake, and they were the ones that really started bringing the first of the handcrafted Oh, God, this nose is phenomenal. Good man. Now, these guys use the same rice. They use a different now, little yeast, a little different this nose, This nose has a lot of champagne-like characteristics to it. I'm getting the alcohol of it, actually, a little bit. But I'm getting white grape. You get, like, a white grape. And they use a cobo that has a God, lot of... this is very champagne-like. It really is. Almost, as a matter of fact, that if I smell this with a complete blindfold, it would not totally not cross my mind if this was a sparkling beverage. Beautiful. Because because I get that... I get what that, that, that smell on the nose that I get so often, which is like baked bread with lemon juice poured on top of it. Yeasty. Break bread mm -hmm. has a yeastiness mm -hmm. to it, so there's a lot of yeast and stuff. A lot. And so that's why a lot of people like that kind of yeastiness of it. Um, there's also a licorice component on the back end. If you smell this again, on the tail end, are you getting this? Anus or your anus? Yeah, yeah, my anus. You know, anus you know, I'm getting a little bit like a... Do you, do you get that a little? Your anus on the back end? <laughs> I'm getting my... A little, and, it's and, better you know, get the anus licorice. on the back end yes. than the front end, right? Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, I don't like anise, and so my nose absolutely is that what is that, that what you might have said? I'm getting the alcohol, and maybe you, and you seem to like tail away because it's really starting to come through for me quite a bit, actually. As it warms up a little bit. Yeah. What do you think? No, or are you not getting it? No, it's the alcohol. I'm getting it. No, it's the anise. It's, all right. So you, you said it. All right. So you're the, a little concerned in the nose on this. You think it's over yeasted? I didn't say that. You okay. said it. I know. These guys use a yeast that's You're very, implying it. No, it does a lot of berry action. Mm -hmm. A lot of a lot of banana, a lot of berry action. The, the cobo that they're using. I do using. get the banana, actually. There you go. I definitely do get the banana. So, the yeast are awesome in the sake world. I'll be honest. They're very concentrated. Um, super productive. Of all the fermented beverages, sake has the highest naturally occurring alcohol content. It'll ferment up to about 20%, no problem. Bust and what they'll your do, ass. What they'll do is they'll add water to most brews to bring it down to about an average of about 15, 16%. So when people think of sake, please think about 15% alcohol. Don't think of like, oh my God, I have to drink out of a small glass to moderate my, no, drink out, it's like a couple you know, wine glasses at dinner. Now this is the guy I would, before I taste it, well, no, those are, you say what you guys say.
The alcohol comes through quite a bit on the mid palate. I also get a chicken broth type flavor on the finish, which I thought was quite compelling. Um, let me taste it. Saltiness, like a savory saltiness, chicken broth? Yeah, like a little bit, yeah. That's exactly where, where, where my mind is going with that. These guys practice voodoo, so there's a very good chance they dropped a chicken in that bat. You think so? I don't think so. I think there's a chance. Chicken juice? All right. um, savory is a big play. I got it. No, yeah, absolutely. What, do you, what, did you, what were you going to say? You said before I taste this, I would do something. This is the guy I'd have a little bit more chilled. Got it, okay. And that's because of the alcohol that we're feeling so much in the feet? Yeah. Correct. Because the heat does overwhelm this wine. Correct. And I understand. Mm -hmm. what, you, what else are you picking up on this? Um, again, it's... Can I call it a wine? You know, it's my natural intuition. You don't want to. You want to call you it a You can call it a wine. A brew, beer. I know. You call but it. you call it a brew, right? I call it a brew. Mm -hmm. okay. Or a sake. Mm -hmm. Or a wine. You know, you can call it a wine. Um, what I do like about it is it's pretty damn clean. So... It's very clean. It's And especially before you actually drink any alcohol, you know, changes that palate. That initial, like if you float it in your mouth, definitely has like that ocean water play. Coming into the saltiness. The, yeah. The kind of it, it's here. It's clearly it. there. It's good. These guys are a great brewery. They read. Do you, do you like Nigori? Do you like unfiltered sake? I do. You do? I do. Okay. I like cloudiness. I like you know. I get excited with the cloudy. I like because the creamy. It's different. I like the you know. I like the creamy aspect of it. Thank those guys because forty two years ago the tax department. This day. Oh, yesterday, mm -hmm. Father's Day actually. Tomorrow. Father's Day. Um, they went to the tax department and said we would like to start making Nigori sake again. And how, why did the they first stop time? making it? Yeah, because initially the way to tax sake is they would tax anything that was filtered. We call it filtered, where you remove the leaves, the rice polishers mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, up until that point, anything that you saw was cloudy sake was like bootlegger sake that people made in their bathtub because they wouldn't go through the effort to you know, remove sure. the leaves. So, 42 years ago, this brewery said, look, we want to we want to make nigori sake again. Good nigori. And they make great nigori. They make a sparkling. Do you like nigori, or is that considered not pure? You, you know what? Let me take myself out of the question. Take, On the whole, Keep yourself in the question first. Uh, I like nigori to a certain degree, but I'm so... I, I don't... I don't like this. I like nuance. I like subtleties. Nigori is so like direct. This. Cut. <laughs> 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 um, I, I, I like I like being able to find something rather than something find me. I, that's really that's cool. Something. That's kind of cool. Because it's just it's a bum rush. That's a that little Christopher Columbus in you. It's a bum rush of flavor. Yeah. I don't like it. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. I, I like something to be a little bit more nuanced. I understand. So okay, but you like Nigori. I do. I, I and like it's fun. White, you know, listen, cloudy booze. I, I'm more, I'm in that place where I like a lot of it right now, right? Because the discerning. But I mean, I definitely, I definitely could see the chilling factor here because the alcohol was definitely a play, no question. I would give that a B plus. All right, we have two minutes before you guys have to get the food out of the refrigerator. Okay, you guys, you want to right. let's do a bigger one because there was a lot of alcohol. In there. Yeah, I think I'll be able to get through it. You got, okay. I think so. All right. Now, what about this sucker right here? You brought Ooh, it. You talk to it first. Let me clean my glass. Um, the last time this was presented in front of me at a restaurant in New York City, I asked for a white wine glass. So Good I'm very proud man. of myself. Um, yeah, but, but in, drinking. But I drank out of both. Good man. Because it's fun. It's fun. And it's I, it's and freaking fun. I chew bark, so I was biting on it. Good. So I was like, yeah. You know, and you want to know something? What's Here that? you go. Little fact. One of the, you know, sake used to be very coarse. It used to be. I didn't even pour for you. Okay. I apologize. No problem. Um, what so, do we have here? This is Taihazan. This is Taihazan. Tenko. Heavenly Tenko, Grace. Right. Um, it's a Kimoto Jumai Daiginjo. Kimoto Jumai Daiginjo. But back Kimoto. to the box for half a second. Uh, by the way, th these guys are stellar brewers. And how much they does this go for? This guy's 54 bucks. 54 bones. Dwayne Gordon wore that number for the Jets in 1998. 54. Who's the current Jet that has 54 now? They don't have a current Jet 54 now. Victor Hobson and now. They may have one in camp right now. But they have like three of them. There's the there's one that's yeah. 354. <laughs> yeah, one's in a red jersey. Yeah, I mean, they all have tape on their hands. Yeah. You said you like to chew it. Sake used to be kind of coarse. used to be rough. used to be not the greatest tasting beverage. So these guys said, well, maybe if we drink it out of a Masu cedar box, it will mask the flavor a little bit. Add a little bit of that acid. It's like, it's like aging wine in, or in, uh, in oak. It, it orc. Certain, or orc. When you, when you, orc. Listen, when you when you age a wine and orc, right there. Uh, clearly. what kind of orc is it? Is it old growth orc <laughs> yes. or new growth orc? orc. Um, also, uh, a masu is a certain size, a fixed size. So these guys used to go to the little izakaya's little pub, and they'd say, you know, give us a, a cup of sake. And so the guy would give them these kind of not trick cups, but it wouldn't. You weren't getting money for value. So That's one smart guy said, dude, give me my value. And this used to be a measurement for rice. And so they started using that as a pure That's measurement. Cool. I get my poor, my fair share. Even, I can go even further, but in fact, I want you to taste that in a little bit because it is kind of cool. It's cool to drink out of a corner, but again, if you're drinking premium sake, you will notice how much that changes the flavor of the sake. We'll do that without question. We will definitely so, do that. 
This guy is made with the Kimoto method. Pole ramming method. Pole ramming. Have you ever heard of Kimoto? Uh, Kimoto? Bain, nope. Neil, uh, please come to receiving. Mark Bain and Neil, please come to receiving. I love that. I love that I put up the microphone. I gotta go to receiving. I'll be right back. <laughs> yes. Um, lactic acid. So traditionally when you make sake, one of the ways these guys thought to promote lactic acid was to use poles, these Kimoto pole ram. So they would pole ram the steamed mash to try to promote lactic acid. And what happened is it, it, it evolved into a way of making kind of a creamier, softer play. You will get creamy elements in this nose. Well, that's going to be um, exciting. And then, nice. And then, uh, then they realized that you don't have to do all the pole ramming. You can actually uh, raise the temperature and have natural airborne yeasts kind of promote that lactic acid. And then finally, just realized that you can just add lactic acid to promote the thing. I get kiwi on this nose. Good call. Which I really like. You do? Yeah. You like kiwis? Well, absolutely. My little daughter loves kiwis. I like, I actually like, I'm so lazy and I want everything so quick that I usually bite a kiwi in the middle, like, like take it out and just squeeze it into my mouth. That's legitimately how I eat most kiwis. How about nougat? How do like you, a chicken how, nugget? How do you eat your nougat? <laughs> chicken, <laughs> uh, chicken nougat, <laughs> aged in orc. That's right, an orc. This is a subtle nose though. I mean this, you know, th th I would definitely call this, you know, uh, an AC wine if I was on the Thunder Show, which I am. Which stands for aromatically AC. challenged. But you're making that as a bad thing. No. Challenged? No. I'm, no. ver I'm vertically challenged. No, I mean, you know, thing? I'm I'm I can't I'm challenged in, in many ways, but I'm a tremendous character. Horizontally you challenged. You know, <laughs> that could be a whole different story. The the thing here is that it's not aromatically explosive. You start comparing this to the nose of the last one, you're you're not even in the same dynamic. And if you're somebody like me who really enjoys the nuances of the nose, you know, I always talk about it being like the previews at a movie theater. I legitimately like the previews more than the actual movie. This becomes something that I'm not disappointed about, but I just wish there was more going on. That's all. I'm not picking up on as much. Do you think the carpet will match the curtains? I don't think so. I actually think that this is an example, given what I, I mean, I'm just using my common sense. This is probably going to have a lot of complexities. I think I'm going to taste a lot of things that I don't actually smell. Beautiful. Good answer. But I, but I could be uh, I'm not a huge, I don't drink with my nose. I do. I don't. I do. And, uh. <laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs> I thought it was fun. This is a, you know. I really enjoy this category and I really enjoy you and this has really become one of my most enjoyable episodes of Wine Library TV so I appreciate that, Bo. I really do. I tell you what, you you turned me into a man today. Was it that? Was it that? Yeah, was it that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, That's let's give this a whirl. No, let's give this a whirl. When you talk to somebody who's passionate, it's just a great thing. It resonates. It's a, it's it, a rarity, it, unfortunately, which is why I wrote a book, which is coming out in October to talk about it. Ma! No, not that one, though I love that book. I had a galley. Oh, I did that yesterday at the house. All right, let's give it a whirl. Now, I'm a big f uh, flavor player. This is a huge apple play. Good call. Right? I Absolutely. mean, that initial attack of like real apples, like real, true golden apples. Uh, let me, actually, a little more red delicious, actually. Like a red delicious apple is quite stunning. It's a, it's a huge apple explosion in the beginning. What about the viscosity? Do you like the weight of this Thick, guy? Thick, I do. I'm, I'm a big I like, guy. I do, me too. And sometimes I'll say like a Pinot a Noir. Absolutely. Like a, a Oregonian Pinot, that thick, juicy, fat. Yeah, apple. and if you really like, you know, and then you, California, you know, Santa Rita Hills, they even get even thicker because they put Syrah in it, cheaters. Um, but, you know. Um, Cheater wine. I really do feel the viscosity, which is where I was gonna go with this. This tastes more like, almost like a true apple cider because of the flavor and the weight in comparison to let's say an, an apple, like a Mott's apple juice. You never heard that one before, Mott. I know, I know Mott's, like the little cans. Yeah, My mom was they're the weird, like, one. you know, like they're kind of weird, like that, the, yes, there's the cans, but they also have the weird, like, right, like the glass bottle, and oh, you're yeah. like, they're just weird. Tremendous though, love you guys. <laughs> So again, this guy brewed for 40 days, a little longer. Typically, sake is brewed for 30 days, and this guy has uh, a lot of weight to it, and I like I like that fact. I also get like leaves, almost like apple Cru and leaves. leaves. I mean, I, you know what I taste? October. I taste Fall October. Brew. Yeah, ab absolutely taste football season. Like, can we put that on the tasting note? Tailgating with Tanko. Oh my God. I'm devastated. As a marketer, I'm get devastated that you took that. <laughs> It was too easy. Try it out of this. Oh yes, yes. So uh, first of all, you can't smell anything because you smell the wood. Correct. Which is fine. Now let's taste the wood. Oh wait, don't drink out of that one. I had stage one. No kidding. I'm sorry, we're gonna share. 
we know each other now. Very well. At that moment. Um, two things pop out of me. One, which is staggering, and you're gonna have to break this one down for me a little bit. Well, actually, I mean, I actually taste the alcohol a little more out of the, out of the uh, wooden box. And I lost a lot of the apple subtleties on the initial attack. I got more Oops. creaminess out of this. Did you get any more like creamy quality to it? Or it just became boozy? You know what, I don't know. I, I was so taken aback by the back end alcohol and it's the fact that I missed that first. Cedar so antiseptic -y. Maybe mm -hmm. you're getting that alcohol's kind of like septic kind of Maybe. flavor to it. I like septic so, systems though. Nice. In I, general. I think they're overrated, truthfully. Do really? Yeah. I think that's a very valid point. I, I, I think this is a very, very good uh, socket. You know what's funny? Um, I, I think that you know it's it, it's just shocking to me how different the beverage world in this country is going to be in 12 and 15 years. I truly believe that tea is going to explode in this country, and that the the percentage of people drinking tea in comparison to coffee. I'm talking about 10, 12 years. I do this a lot because I know this will live forever. Got it. And I like being Notre Dame. Um, is that that people will be Notre or or Notre Dame? I truly believe that tea is gonna become a much bigger consumed beverage and I truly believe with all my heart that sake is gonna have a much bigger play. I'm very much looking forward to as a wine retailer and I never wanna go away from those roots and I'll be doing other things but I'll always be there. The day when, listen, I remember the day when we didn't have a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc section. And I when truly, was that? that was probably 1996, you know, 97 and then I started bringing a couple in. I hooked them into the Australian section and then finally maybe in like 2000 it had its own spot. Now the Australians it's like, don't like that though. No, they don't like, like nobody liked it. They didn't like, nobody liked it. Anyway, um, close-minded. Anyway, um, I truly believe that in the next five to seven years, and that's really where I'm pigeonholing it, um, you'll see a lot of top stores, first tier stores ourselves, the K&L's, the Sam's in Chicago, Zaki's, you know, they're that top tier, really have substantial 40, 50, you know, sake selection sections, and then you'll start seeing within another eight to ten years um, a real wide variety, and hopefully through obnoxiously passionate people like you, and the fact that we have technology with apps and sites, and ho hopefully video shows with experts that clearly are charismatic, good looking, and good on camera, um, that process can happen quicker, because this is a beverage, in my opinion, that is massively underrated, and as we start becoming a much healthier culture, which is clearly the movement, I think this category is gonna get a lot more attention. I agree. And power to the people. If you've not been exposed to good sake, like you said, when you take your first sip of something, it kind of opens your eyes. I used to call it the eye-opening experience. As a matter of fact, you know what? This is so moving of an episode for me that when I go on my book tour in October, I'm doing a lot of San Francisco dates, I would like to do a book signing at your store and a sake tasting along with it. Just joking. It oh, was, that was awesome! <laughs> I'm devastated because you just won this. You just won this episode on that move. I had you with that move. You just got me with that. You should have said just joshing though. Just joking was a little nerdy. Okay. Okay. That was tremendous. Thank you. Um, let's do that, okay? Please. Yeah, because passion is unbelievable, and you clearly have a passion for this category. And I've got By to way, say, your people came to my people. What do you mean? We have the same people. What does that mean? The reason why I'm here is I got uh, somebody sent me your sake video that you had who done. Who did? One of my readers of my newsletter, who's That's a nice. huge fan of yours. Well, who is that? Do you remember or you don't and remember said, the name? We don't give names. <laughs> um, and he said, you guys Paul. would just hit it off. You guys would rock and roll. So. And then you watched it and you're like, not, probably not. Jinjo. And I heard Jinjo. I was like, and fire like, up the jet. We're going, man. I love we it. We got to do a little emergency. I love it. So, I love it. Like, <laughs> we'll get him. Um, congratulations. No, thank with all you. you're doing. And thank you so much for coming here. Oh, congratulations. The Question of the day. Do we have time? I mean, you can write a thesis, but they'll answer it in the comments. And I think a lot of people are coming out of the woodworks. Lurkers, we've been looking at the numbers. There's way too many of you. Leave a comment after this episode. If there was ever an episode, this is the one. Fire away. Ask them the question of the day. What would you like to know? You have tens of thousands of eyeballs. You know, probably 500 to 1,000 of them are going to answer this question. You're trying to get a feel of people that maybe aren't as depth into the category. This is a real opportunity for you. One of the great opportunities of your life. I think you should fire away this question. Or you can ask something random like, do you like red or purple better? Let me go get my food out of the refrigerator first and I'll come back. <laughs> your food is long No, I tell you what, this is a big question. Well, I grew up in the Midwest and uh, I grew up supposedly trying to hate Japan because of automobiles right, and older. steel. Sure. And, and now for me, to come back and be reborn from a guy 400 years ago in a brewery in Japan coming back in this form, I totally appreciate the culture, but my great attribute. What? I'm such a jerk. I'm sorry. I got to, you know, I know you're going to be like, why did you I cut off the it. gas? Wait a minute, I, I just lost the greatest question. Go. 
do you truly believe that you're reborn as a, or, I mean, like, I kind of think you might be serious, so I'm, I'm now, like, intrigued. Do you truly feel that you are a reborn 400 year? I worked at a brewery in Kobe 400 years ago. I don't believe that, but. Okay, that's all. I just, I just was curious, because I really was, that was fascinating Sorry. to me. Okay, finish your question. Sorry. All things in life create passion. My question to you is, of any alcoholic beverage to date, when did you have your epiphany or that magic moment that just made you say, this is it, I want to hang on to this, and I want to learn as much as I possibly can about that beverage? Does it have to be alcoholic or it could be non-alcoholic as well? I don't know how generally you want to go. Well, they can, they're just Passion. human beings. They can ask anything. It doesn't even have to be a beverage. Maybe it's a food. Subset. The epiphany moment on anything. Kiwis. Star fruit. When was that moment when you tasted something was like, I got to know everything about it. Like that. I, I got to know everything about this. Why? How did that happen? That happened for me in 1984 when I first tasted Captain Crunch cereal. Did you Best thing ever. Bleeding your mouth? Your mouth was bleeding on the roof? Nice. You! With a little bit of me and especially outrageously phenomenal, charismatic, knowledgeable human beings like this, we are changing the sake world.